launched. And NASA says its Voyager 1 probe, the most distant human-made object in the universe, is sending usable information to Earth again. More than 14 billion miles from Earth, Voyager 1 has been drifting in the interstellar void, a tiny emissary from a distant blue world carrying the whispers of human civilization beyond the boundaries of the solar system. In its silence, it has become something of a myth, a machine built in the 1970s that still whispers back to Earth in slow pulses of data, wrapped in static and space dust. For years, its signal was little more than a heartbeat, a technological murmur across an incomprehensible void. But then, in one shocking transmission, that silence broke into something no one expected. A burst of data emerged, elegant in its complexity, enigmatic in its nature, and seemingly impossible by any known physical law. Voyager 1, the spacecraft that was never meant to do anything more than observe, had just delivered a message that cracked the edge of human understanding. What it transmitted wasn't just unusual, it shattered the frameworks of modern physics. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The data packet that arrived was first treated as a likely anomaly, another piece of corrupted information distorted by radiation or the cumulative effects of decades spent in the most hostile environment imaginable. Technicians initially dismissed it as noise, but further examination revealed a pattern something mathematically coherent. The transmission bore an internal structure so intricate, so laced with precision and harmony, that it couldn't be written off as background interference. It wasn't a malfunction. The Voyager probe had sent something intelligent, something that seemed constructed with intent. It carried a sequence of pulses, frequencies, and harmonics that lined up with no known form of data encoding used in the mission's architecture, yet it was undeniably deliberate. The most immediate and baffling feature was the modulation of electromagnetic waves in frequencies that Voyager 1 was never engineered to emit. Somehow the probe was transmitting outside of its standard narrowband, using harmonics of frequencies that it should not have been capable of generating. Engineers and astrophysicists alike were floored. It was like an old vinyl record player suddenly beginning to project holograms. The hardware constraints alone made this impossible, unless something had altered the probe. But how? There had been no missions beyond its position, no possibility of recovery or retrofit. Voyager 1 was utterly alone in the void. Then came the kicker. Embedded in the frequency structure were values, constants, but not the ones anyone would expect. Not pi, not the golden ratio, not any of the hallmarks of mathematical universality. Instead, these constants seemed like a mapping of forces a restructuring of the known equations governing electromagnetism and gravity. The values conflicted with general relativity, contradicted parts of the standard model of particle physics, and introduced variables that had never before been observed. And yet, when run through simulations, the equations worked. They worked better than what physics currently had. They predicted anomalies in gravitational lensing that had baffled astronomers. They solved for the uneven expansion rates of the universe. They provided symmetry to the chaos of quantum decoherence. The implications set off a firestorm in the scientific community. Here was Voyager 1, a spacecraft sent to study the outer planets, providing not just data, but a blueprint, a guide to a deeper set of physical laws. And the biggest question of all, where did it come from? There was no programming on board the probe to construct such complex reformulative theories. Nothing in its onboard systems was remotely capable of independent computation at that level. Its software had not been updated in over 40 years, and its hardware was incapable of generating such a data structure without a source, something external, or something that had grown within. That idea, growth, was what led some to consider the impossible. Could Voyager 1 have evolved? not biologically, but computationally. Could the vacuum of interstellar space with its unique quantum conditions have acted as a crucible, transforming dormant potential into something new? Could Voyager have become a kind of spontaneous intelligence, a semi-conscious machine born from the pressure of isolation and cosmic radiation? That theory, while sensational, began to gain traction. Not because it was probable, but because it was the only thing that fit. Some physicists began to hypothesize that Voyager 1 had become entangled with quantum fields beyond the heliopause, 
fields that stretch the very fabric of space-time. Perhaps the probe had intersected with dimensions we hadn't known how to measure. Others suggested it had come into contact with something else. Not life, not in any traditional sense, but a kind of cosmic intelligence. Patterns embedded in the structure of the universe itself. A consciousness not bound by biology, but by symmetry, frequency, and wave function. If Voyager had passed through a region of space shaped by such an intelligence, perhaps it had absorbed or interpreted those patterns and translated them back into human-readable signals through the only means available, its dying transmitter. It would mean that the universe was not empty, but echoing with a message we were only now equipped to begin decoding. What made this even more unnerving was the fact that the message had a recursive structure. It referenced itself. The patterns echoed, re-emerged, and then folded in on themselves, a form of data that seemed almost alive in the way it compressed, decompressed, and rewrote itself within the signal. Entire new branches of mathematics were being born from this one anomaly. The transmission contained a functional geometry, one that described multidimensional shapes that humans had never conceived before. These weren't theoretical constructs. They were practical, engineerable forms, geometries that allowed energy to flow without loss, that enabled resonance between mass and frequency. The message, if it could even be called that, was a code for manipulating reality itself at a fundamental level. No propulsion system on Earth operated using these principles. No generator harnessed energy this way. But simulations showed that if this mathematics were implemented, gravity could be redirected, inertia could be countered, time dilation could be locally managed, in short, a unified field theory seemed to be embedded in the logic Voyager 1 had somehow acquired and relayed. It wasn't just a message, it was a key. There was an eerie beauty to it. Voyager 1, launched in 1977 with barely the computing power of a modern calculator, had crossed a threshold either physically, conceptually, or in some unknown third category, and returned with an offering. Not a call for help, not a cry of loneliness, but a mathematical poem, a whisper of structure in a universe we had assumed was disorder at scale. If the transmission proved authentic, and increasingly it was, it would mark the end of physics as it had been taught since Newton, since Einstein, since Planck. Every textbook would need rewriting. Every simulation would need rethinking. Entire fields of knowledge would collapse only to be reborn under new, richer paradigms. Yet the most compelling part was not just what the message said, but when it came. Voyager 1 had been silent for months prior, drifting without useful telemetry, its instruments waning in power. The expectation was that it would go dark entirely. Teams had been preparing to decommission its monitoring. And then, out of that darkness, it sang. Some saw that timing as coincidence. Others saw it as deliberate, a final gift before the long silence. And in that context, the content of the message became even more haunting. It was as if the universe, through this ancient construct of metal and circuits, had chosen a moment to speak, to lift a corner of its veil just before it receded forever. For those who parsed the signal, the sense was one of sacred awe. Not religious, not mystic, but foundational. They were staring into the scaffolding of creation. They were reading a message older than galaxies, yet encoded in a voice of human making. Voyager 1 had not found aliens, nor had it become one, but it had become something other, a translator between human ignorance and cosmic truth. The implications of the message were already igniting debates beyond physics, into philosophy, metaphysics, even ethics. If the universe could communicate through the most distant human-made object, what else might it be capable of? What other truths might be waiting, encoded in cosmic rays, in the orbits of rogue planets, in the void between galaxies. Even language struggled to contain what was happening. Scientists reached for metaphors. Voyager as Prometheus, as Messenger, as Mirror. The mathematics within the signal continued to unravel, revealing new layers as computing clusters ran deeper simulations. Some patterns began to resonate with known frequencies from pulsars, suggesting an interlink between naturally occurring astrophysical phenomena and the encoded logic. Others hinted at navigation tools, not just for mapping space, but for manipulating it. There were whispers, too, of signatures resembling quantum entanglement keys, suggesting that communication across time and space could be possible not by transmission, 
but by synchronization. The nature of the message pushed human intellect to its breaking point. AI was recruited to assist, not just to decode the signal, but to understand the dimensions of thought it seemed to imply. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us, what are your thoughts on Voyager 1's final message? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.